Some people are able to be controlled. Some people are able to be talked into doing things that they would never do. This response to suggestibility is what we call hypnotism. To understand this phenomenon even briefly, we need to dip into neuroscience. There are several different parts of the brain that have to play along for hypnotism to work on anyone. The first one I want to bring to your attention is called the dorsal anterior cingulate gyrus. This area is responsible for many things, including regulation of pain and emotion, and then avoiding negative consequences. But the big one I want to talk to you about that this one does is it produces a large amount of what's called GABA. And GABA is short for gamma amino butyric acid. Now to understand how this works, you need to understand that GABA is like the peacemaker in the family. If you've ever been to a family function and it's the holidays and people are having fun and then there's always this small group of people that tend to want to argue. If you've ever been around the person that's like the family peacemaker, they're saying, calm down, don't worry, it's gonna be okay, everybody relax, don't worry, he's just had too much to drink or she's just got a bad attitude or they've just had a bad day. The person that plays the peacemaker in that family that's calming everything down, that's what GABA does in your brain. Of course, it has more functions than that, but for today and for our purposes, that's all you need to understand about GABA. According to the National Library of Medicine, as you can see here, GABA ratios are positively correlated with hypnotizability. Now that's only the first part of the puzzle. Now the second part of the puzzle is even more important and it's called the dorsal medial prefrontal cortex. It's right here. This is one of the parts of your brain whose primary function among others is to worry about what it is that you have to worry about. To understand this, I want you to think of yourself driving a car full or a van full of children in a snowstorm. I want you to think for just a moment what it would be like if instead of a clear, perfect day, you're driving through icy conditions, snow is blowing everywhere, it looks like a blizzard outside, you can barely see anything, and you've got precious cargo in the back because they're children. Now as a driver of that vehicle, you would likely be very, very on edge watching for everything that you need to be careful of. If the wind blows, you slow down. Your eyes are constantly scanning for risks and for things that may make a problem because your main job here is to protect those kids in the back and to worry about all the things that need to be worried about to keep everybody and everything safe. Now this part we're talking about, the dorsal medial prefrontal cortex, right in the center here. This one, if it's elevated, if it's working overtime, if it's constantly humming like you are when you're protecting people and you're stressing out over everything, this makes people almost impossible to hypnotize. Why is that? Because it makes you less susceptible to suggestion. Now, according to peer-reviewed studies, about 60 to 79% of people are able to be hypnotized in the classic sense that they can be brought into compliance with suggestion. But about 25 to 30% of people, it's impossible for them to be hypnotized because they cannot be brought into compliance with suggestion. And in this 25 to 30% of people, guess what? The dorsal medial prefrontal cortex is working overtime. I also wanna add in here that people that suffer with the disorder called schizophrenia, the dorsal medial prefrontal cortex is always on and it's always working overtime. This is why in the science world, people say that people with schizophrenia are impossible to hypnotize. Now that may or may not be 100% true, but I guarantee you it's much more difficult for someone in that type of capacity to fall under what we call suggestibility. And this is no laughing matter because of course schizophrenia, people that suffer from this disorder deal with things like delusions and they deal with hallucinations, disorganized thinking, disorganized speech, and of course a myriad of other issues. There's yet another component in the cocktail of suggestibility and it is found in your cerebral spinal fluid. And it's a chemical, it's actually an acid called HVA. 
And when these levels are elevated, and you can check these levels with a spinal tap, when the levels of HVA are elevated in your cerebral spinal fluid, that works in conjunction with the other two parts that I just told you about. And the strange thing is, those levels can actually be manipulated by many over-the-counter drugs. There are over-the-counter supplements that you can take to modify the levels of GABA as well as HVA in your bloodstream. You may not know this, but some of your over-the-counter antacids that you take for heartburn actually do this. So can people be hypnotized? Sure they can. I'll do another video on that later. Absolutely they can. 60 to 79% of people, according to peer-related studies, are able to be subjected to suggestion. And covert and deep level suggestion is what we call hypnosis. But as you can see now, the 25 to 30% of people who are almost impossible to hypnotize fall in the categories that we just discussed.